I'm Warren Vanderhill, Provost and Vice President for Academic Affairs here at Ball State University, and it's my great pleasure to welcome you to this video record of the second year of our Green for Green grant activity. These grants really came out of recommendations that were given to me by a committee of faculty which would focus on ways that we could become more aware of environmental concerns at the Ball State University campus and how we could become part of a greater national network looking at areas of concern to all of us that have to do with our lives as part of uh, an environmental community. Uh, the faculty who participated this year went through a screening process and the grants awarded were selected by a committee chaired by Dr. Thomas Lowe, uh, would work by Mr. Robert Kester, and I'm really grateful to them for the time and effort they put into this. Oftentimes people ask me why Ball State University, why a school located in the heart of the heart of the country in America's Middletown would be so concerned about environmental focus. And my response to that is that though you might find programs like this at places like Missoula, Montana or Santa Barbara, California, it is just as important for schools like Ball State University to make as part of its mission a very important searching, wide-ranging focus on environmental issues that are of importance to all students regardless of where they're attending uh, university or college. So it's for those kinds of reasons that we really want to make certain that environmental awareness and concern become an important part of the mission of Ball State University. Well, my project involves designing posters, and it's something that I had been interested in doing anyway, but, you know, like with most people, I suspect when an opportunity came up to get some funding to actually make it happen, then I got serious about it. Well, I grew up on a farm in Iowa, and very much enjoyed being outside and was outside and working with the animals and various things around the farm as much as possible and so I've always been very interested in that and my grandfather I think was a big influence because he was someone who was very much a self-taught person but was very interested in plants, trees, birds, wildflowers and knew incredible amounts of things, the names of things, how they grew, why they grew. And I just always had really respected him and I think a lot of his interests rubbed off on me. That's a tricky question because it's an issue that for me isn't an environmental issue as much as a life issue. And if I could change one thing, I would like to see our society become more um, localized, if I guess is the best word that comes to mind. I'd like to see more of a sense of people living where they work, working where they live, um, living gently with the land that's around them. And I think if there was less of an emphasis on you know, constantly moving, constantly traveling, constantly commuting. We'd be using less resources. We'd be more respectful of the, the resources that are close at hand. We'd take better care of the things that are around us because we would be around them on a regular basis. And I just think that we need to live a life that's a little closer to home. That's easy because I think it ties very much in with the idea of closer to home. My pet peeve on the Ball State campus has to deal with vehicles. And I live, I guess, about 10, 12 blocks from campus. And I walk virtually every day, rain or shine, snow, ice, it doesn't matter. 
and the students who live in the houses around me dutifully get in their cars and drive to campus every morning. And I think there are times when you do need to be on campus, you do need to drive. There are people who have no other option, and parking is ridiculous. And I think if more of us would be open to walking and using less resources and wasting less energy in that respect, we'd feel better, there'd be less congestion on campus. I think in a lot of ways it'd make things a lot better and healthier. But Muncie's not really set up for that either. I mean, sidewalks are right next to the street if they exist, and they're narrow, and no one shovels them. And so I think we would need, again, kind of a whole attitude adjustment to make something like that work. Well, as I said, what I'm developing is going to be, I think, a real interesting project because I'm developing a, a poster and then a t-shirt that are going to be able to be distributed on campus to really hopefully get people interested in and aware of trees. I'm looking at the leaf forms because I think leaves are something that's the most readily identifiable that any of us can get a hold of and, and find that to be manageable in learning. And so what I'm doing is to develop the materials in a way that hopefully will be artistically interesting, that I'm going to design them, my intent is to design them so that these would be things that students would find interesting enough and artistically stimulating enough that they would maybe put them up in dorm rooms. Um, I'm hoping that a sideline is that it would spur more interest in the trees that are around campus because we have a very beautiful campus and we have a very diverse planting and a continually growing selection of tree varieties and that the architecture faculty and students put together a um, tree walk brochure last year and that maybe my posters can be something that can be helping to promote that and that people will get out and walk and see what's there. Kind of a sideline on this is, you know, you never know what funding is going to be and what budgets are going to be on campus in, in the future. And I'm hoping that the posters and t-shirts that aren't distributed to various departments on campus are then going to be able to be available for sale. Um, and I'm beginning to work on those arrangements. The idea being that any money that's generated from this project could, at the very least, I think, repay the cost of the project. And potentially, if there is um, a profit that can be made, that that money could then be funneled back into the Green for Green Fund for future projects. And so that's where my hopes are. Well, um, update on this project, which is in progress at this point. What I've been doing is taking a bunch of leaves that I collected and dried last fall, although I discovered I didn't get all of the leaves that I needed, so I'm going to be drying more. And I'm, what I'm trying to do on this poster is to develop something where you can look at the distinctive shapes of the leaves and use it as a way of learning about some of the different varieties of trees that are around. What I decided to do is I want to be using the actual shapes of the leaves in their actual sizes because I think that's going to aid in recognition, although the color is up for grabs and that isn't going to be accurate. I think the size and the shape should be. So I have been doing experiments with looking at both the positive and then the negative forms of the leaves and looking at working on combining them into a poster format. Still working on the ideas about a title for this and I'm still working on some decisions about whether or not to incorporate other sorts of writing, whether that would be things 
that talk about more of the characteristics of the trees or whether it would be things that just talk kind of philosophically about trees. So I'm still working on getting some of those decisions together. The plan is when we get the students graduated and out of here, then I'm going to concentrate on getting this finished up and actually printed so that it'll be available next year for Earth Day. There will also be um, a t-shirt at least that's the plan, to have a t-shirt that goes along with the poster. So the posters would be distributed around campus and then the t-shirts would be sold with the money from those t-shirts coming back into the Green for Green fund to supplement those funds for following years. So that part of things is, is still kind of in my head as opposed to out on paper. Why trees? I think we don't pay enough attention to trees. Um, if it gets in the way, the branches are too low, we chop it down. A bird roosts in it and makes a mess on our car, we chop it down. You know, a tree gets old and begins to rot out and gets wind damaged, and we chop it down and we don't replace. And trees add so much to the environment in terms of aesthetics, in terms of regulating temperature, in terms of, of returning you know, oxygen to the atmosphere. I think trees are really important. And I think too many people are just oblivious to trees and, and to some of the distinctiveness of the trees and some of the just kind of artistic qualities that they have. And I'm just hoping that maybe I can raise awareness a little bit more on a level of, of just visual interest, and then hopefully that'll translate into an environmental interest and, and maybe an environmental activism toward promoting planting and, and growing and maintaining trees. Well, that's uh, uh, quite an interesting question to try to, to, to answer because a little bit of both. Uh, maybe Alan could start off and then I'll finish up as to how we developed the project. Uh, something very similar with me. It's a little bit of both. Um, I've wanted to get involved in some kind of environmental awareness program, uh, heavy on recycling. I'm personally involved in recycling. Um, I had Dr. Mortensen for a class. Uh, where we discussed recycling. Uh, he was very energetic, very exciting about uh, and excited about the program. And then uh, I got information about the Green for Green program. And uh, the two things kind of clicked for me. And uh, Dr. Mortensen and I discussed it and uh, now we're on fire with it. It was one of those things that, uh, you know, professors dream about, really. Uh, we did discuss the importance of recycling as a part of the environmental science course, the Natural Resources 101, and I had some objects and so on. And during that class period, uh, Alan contributed uh, other aspects in terms of, of recycling. He said, did you know this, did you know that, and so on. So he made a major contribution to the class. And then just a few days later, uh, he asked about the, uh, the Green for Green project. He'd heard about it. And I mentioned, I said that uh, in most cases, a student usually works with a mentor. And I said, I'd be glad to work with you on this. So then we, we developed it together. And we're, we're co-equal partners on, on this project. Uh, about two years ago, I was in the Mall of America. And of course, there's one shop after another. It's, it's a very interesting place. And I walked into one storefront, and I saw that this was completely different. And it turned out to be a uh, recycling center, Recycle Now. And it was all these products that formerly uh, had gone to a landfill that were now part of the environment that I was in. There was a wonderful carpet that was made from uh, two liter soda bottles. There was uh, an entrance uh, tile that was made from rubber tires. There was benches that were made from uh, milk jugs. Uh, there was information about energy. And it was, one of the, uh, it was just a tremendously exciting thing uh, for me to, um, to be there because I've been on landfills and I've seen this waste of society. And I've said for years and years to my students 
we need to loop the system rather than develop a straight line system going from the from the raw resource to the product to the landfill. We need to go from the product and back into a new product uh, in terms of our economic uh, viability. So uh, I said to myself at that time, you know, I'd like to have something like this at, at Ball State because you just can't imagine how thrilling it is for, for anybody who feels strongly about the environment that uh, we're not going to the landfill with these things. We're saving energy, for example. In, gen in general, when we're making new products, we have less air pollution, we have less water pollution, and so on. So all kinds of environmental activities are being uh, benefited here. Uh, and then I made the, the, you know, the presentation of, of the recycling concept, primarily in terms of minerals, to the class. And then my good fortune was to have Alan <laughs> in the class. And the, uh, well, the, the number of products that, that uh, I've become aware of, uh, both through, through your information, the information that I find in both my recreational reading and uh, text readings and, and what have you, uh, the amount of, of products, the variation in products is, uh, is outstanding. What we're hoping to get with, the, uh, with our display is to let the uh, student body, the faculty, any passerby of our display, to have the uh, opportunity to see what a wide range is actually available now uh, for these formerly landfilled items. And uh, obviously, you can tell that we're both pretty excited about this because it, it really is, as we do this project, I'm finding out, I thought I was pretty well schooled on these items, and I'm finding left and right items that are uh, <laughs> amazing. What? Uh, I was just telling Dr. Morton's on our way over here. I, I've contacted a company who deals in 100% uh, recycled fruit tree prunings and turns them into wood briquettes, um, something that many, many people use, but uh, probably have no idea that, that something is available that formerly went to either, uh, hopefully, to at least a compost area, but probably into a landfill. Uh, then you go to the extreme other end of uh, recycled soda bottles, uh, The teachers at Burris uh, are very interested in the environment and we've been doing a lot of different kinds of things. Every teacher has her own uh, way of teaching, uh, her own activities that she likes to do. Uh, when we read the grant uh, opportunity though, I think we all got excited and uh, gave us a way to approach, approach our teaching in a little different way than we would have before. Being a child in the 40s, there wasn't much talk about that. There wasn't much going on that would make us environmentally aware. But I had a father who was very concerned about water and the use of water and not wasting water. So as a child, I became very aware that the water was an important thing to take care of. Uh, that was mainly so the well wouldn't run dry because we had cows that had to be watered. So I became aware of... of uh, being taking care of water and that kind of thing. And then growing up on a farm, we worried a lot about soil erosion. So I became aware of those kind of things. And one topic just kind of built on another. So as a child, I did become aware of those two things. I think if I could do anything to change government response to environment, it would be to get them to work together so that what we're doing in Muncie is the same as what they're doing in Evansville, and that Indiana's doing the same things as Ohio. I think if people work together, there'd be more of a continuity and enthusiasm for saving this planet. Uh, I guess it's, it's hard for me to understand why uh, some states can have uh, curbside 
recycling, curbside pickups, and, and we can't. I, so I, I think that we should be able to, um, to have a policy that would be uniform and that would make sense for, for all of us. I think it's interesting as visitors come on our campus itself, then they likely see a fairly clean, neat campus because we have a lot of work people who are out there trying very hard to keep it that way. Yet if they go just one block beyond the campus area, and I'm thinking specifically about the University Village area, then there's so much trash left over and that's on the streets and on the street corners and uh, it really needs to have a whole community, a university community commitment to keeping the area clean and tidy and uh, having proper receptacles. I think our, our project is designed to, uh, to include a lot of um, different layers. We, we've got teachers involved, we have children involved, uh, we hope to have parents involved. Uh, we are involving our college students, trying to get our college students to realize that uh, how enthusiastic children can be when presented with this, this problem or this, this great concern. Uh, and I think to raise this level of enthusiasm among our children is our, is our goal for the day. Hopefully the day will be lots of fun. One of the things we're doing is inviting schools, um, not just Burris, but teachers and school children from all the county schools to come and participate and hope that they'll take that back and kind of be a springboard to more environmental things happening here in Delaware County. And it's not just that day. Our college students are involved in activities either before or after, depending on how the teacher wants to handle that. But it, it the particular day will be a lot of children, but we intend to carry it out in our classrooms even after or before. So our students will be involved in learning centers. They're environmentally done, and they'll hear two speakers um, or two groups. Susan, you want to? Well, the first group who uh, is going to become involved are the Pal and I piano duo, and it's a rather unique situation. These women are uh, both extremely concerned with the environment and have taken a great number of photographs and then they put particular piano music to the photographs so it's a multimedia kind of presentation. They also do some speaking and it's more like an informance, uh, so a performance and information together. And then uh, at the end of the day uh, the children will come together and put on their own display um, through music and rap and singing and activities, maybe even some dance, and let other people know how they feel about the day, the, the science projects that they've just been taking part in. And it should be lots of fun. They can take that back to their classrooms too, those who are visiting. The other speaker is Mike Lanou, who is a, a medical teacher here at Ball State but has an avid interest and a more than a hobby in the amphibian population of Indiana. Uh, also in the world, really, he travels around and he is, has slides and presents information very effectively to children. He will be another speaker that we have. So I would like now to introduce to you my two friends, Joy Innes and Adrian Shannon, who are the Pal and I duo. Thank you very much.
Okay. Last Tuesday was your Earth Day recognition and celebration. What did you learn, or did you see, or did you experience during the day? Um, I liked um, do, having the choir songs, and it was kind of hard because we only had one day to learn them. To practice? What did you learn in the songs? About recycling. About recycling? Mm -hmm. I like the Learning Center because it tells you really how much you're polluting. You don't really think about how much you're polluting, but you really are. Like what did you find out where you do some pollution that you didn't know? Um, I found out that there's the ones we put in water pollution that kills off all the water wildlife like turtles, frogs, amphibians, and fish. Mm -hmm. um, I always thought that most of saving the earth was recycling, but I learned that it's not just recycling, it's um, <laughs> like the way that you treat the animals and that kind of stuff like too. Like what? Like what did you learn? Well, um, that when we knock down trees to make new buildings, we think that there, aren't, there isn't anything living in the trees, but a lot of the time there is and the animals lose their homes. Okay. Well, I learned a lot of different ways you can reuse things, like make games out of old things that you're done with. Mm -hmm. And in the learning centers, we learned some of the animals that are endangered, but some I didn't even know were endangered. Like what? Like the bluebird. I didn't know that was endangered, but it really is. Thank you very much for watching these video presentations of the second year of our Green for Green grant activities. I once again want to express my appreciation to Tom Lowe, to Bob Kester, uh, to Beth Vanderwilt, to other faculty who worked on this project, and to Linus O'Brien, who was in charge of the technical aspects of this. We look forward to sharing the results of future Green for Green activities with you. Thank you very much indeed.